this place today. There is no one like Jehovah. There's no one like Jehovah. And I am just I just adore him and, and all that he's doing. Make, but make no mistake about it, we have families that are suffering. And we want to make sure we never lose sight of what they're going through. We have been spared. Not because we've been so great. But because of his grace. Because of his grace. And I'm so grateful to be here and to see each of you this morning. I cannot tell you. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we're not going to belabor the time. We're going to get into the word of the Lord this morning. And, and what we plan to do is the same message that we record today. Uh, when I get back, we're going to send a link out to the people that don't that, that, that are not able to come out. Amen. And we're going to put this service on around 5 o'clock today. Amen. So you're going to get the same link. I'm not saying you have to come along. Amen. But you'll see the same link go out. Amen. And for those that cannot make it, we're going to make sure that they have an opportunity. Amen. Amen. Amen to hear what the Lord is saying. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 say we found out that the reason why the children of Israel are in Babylon is because they reneged on their agreement with God right. and God said every Sabbath the land should rest and that Sabbath belongs to the Lord yeah. so they had 490 years of prosperity yeah. but they reneged on their agreement to give God that hallowed year and so God said, as a result of this, you're going to go into captivity for 70 years so that the land can rest. I'm, in other words, God said, I'm getting my 70 years back. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. God does not forget a thing, beloved. Amen. And he honors commitment. He honors agreement. Amen. And so they find themselves in Babylon. And at the proper time and season, we find that the king is troubled by a dream. That's right. and let, me, let me say this. A dream that has been sent by God. Yeah. 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 Come on. God hold the hands and the hearts of kings and presidents in his hand. Come on. So 
somebody. He holds them in his hand. Lord, help me. Help me, Jesus. And so when God is ready to move a king on behalf of his children, God moves it. And so God stirs the king up with a dream that neither he nor his wise men can comprehend. They cannot interpret what it means. And so the king calls all the wise men and he tells Ariok, his captain of the guard, and said, listen, if they cannot tell me my dream, if they cannot interpret it, I will kill every wise man in Babylon. Come on. Now he cast a wide net. Come on. So not even Daniel and the other boys with him, his companions, were excluded from that eating. That's right. That's right. That's right. So everybody that considered themselves to be wise men were now in jeopardy. Amen. And so as I shared with you last, the last couple of times, Daniel heard about it and Daniel asked for time so that he could seek the Lord. That's right. And when he did, Daniel knew that even though that he he was going to submit himself to this. He went and called men he could trust. All right. All right. And I share with you, you better know who you're going into the foxhole with. Amen. 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 You, if you need only five dollars, you might not go get a certain person. Or if you need a thousand dollars, you might not want to go get the gossip of the community. Amen. You better know who's going to go into that foxhole. Who will bear the burden with you? Amen. Who will share the burden that you have? You know you need deliverance. You can't have somebody who is lukewarm going into that foxhole. Well, hallelujah, because if you do, you will find out that you will be the one losing and the person in the foxhole with you will be the one that survived. some horror movie and the brave one trying to save everybody else gets killed because of somebody who is in fear. But God had this thing arranged. And Daniel knew that if he sought God, y'all please hear me this morning, and I'm just summarizing what I've talked about the last couple of times. When you understand that Daniel had already laid the groundwork, he had currency with God because when they came to offer Daniel in chapter 1 food that were offered to idols, Daniel said, I refuse it. Come on, y'all please hear me now. What does that mean to us as believers? If you're going to go before God, have some currency built up. And it's not so much as what you do as it is what you separate from. Amen. Come on. Amen. It's not so much as you just showing up in this building. It is what you have separated your life from. And so Daniel them refused to eat the king's meat. And when he took that step, that step prepared him for what was to come. Amen. Hallelujah. And I thank God today that I know, amen, that because of, listen, the groundwork I've laid, I've built up some currency. Amen. So that when my wife uh, and my sons and daughters, when their lives are at stake, I know I can call on God and I know I've built up currency with him. And he said in the time that you're calling I will answer you. Hallelujah. Come on. I'm talking about building up not just a day, but I'm talking about building up years of currency to where I can come boldly to the throne of God and I can make my request known. Oh, hallelujah. Y'all, you better hear me this morning. It's what if, you've been, if we've been hypocritic, we haven't got currency. And the only way I can get currency back is to come to God through Christ yeah. in repentance yeah. Yeah. Come on. and reset the currency clock. Yeah. Come on. Amen. 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 Now, I don't know about you, but I've had to reset the clock Amen. a couple times. Amen. 
I've had to reset it. Because I was taught wrong. I was taught religion for a long time. But God, who is rich in mercy, delivered me to where I walk now with mercy and truth before me. And so here we, we find Daniel in the foxhole mm -hmm. with Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. And he conveys to them what they need to pray for. Mm -hmm. Come on, if you need money, there's no need for your partner that you got in the box so praying for peace. Amen. No, I, if you won't go with me, I want you to pray for money. Come on, in the Bible say that, that if, 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 if a person by themselves fall down, there's nobody there to help them up. But only if they got somebody with them, those that fall, amen, they can, the one that's standing can lift them up. So Daniel said, I want you to pray that God will reveal yes. what the king saw. Amen. And then that he would give us the understanding yes. of what it meant. Amen. Because our lives are at stake now. Yes. Yes. And there's no time to play. We need to hear God and we need to hear God clearly. We don't need a false prophecy. We need to hear God clearly. There's too much false prophecy in our land. And, and listen, if there's been no result, we need to hear God clearly. God, amen, I pray that the prophets rise up with a, with a sure word of prophecy. Hallelujah. That the apostolic ministry will stand up and declare the word of God, the whole council, to help the church grow up. And so we find and I'm sorry, that was just a review. Uh, 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 but I want to start from there. And I think I ended in last week in Psalm 25, 14, said that the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. And he reveals to them his covenant. There's no, there's no reason why the church of the Lord Jesus should be in the dark. Come on, about no matter. Whether it be government, whether it be local situations, there's no reason why the church should be in the dark because God said his secret is with those that fear him. And a lot of times we don't come to God because we have not built up courage. Amen. Come on, as an example, y'all remember Hezekiah? Yeah. Yeah. Hezekiah was told by the prophet, he said, God said, you're going to die. Get your house in order. That's right. <laughs> but Hezekiah didn't, and listen, he didn't whine and belly. He began to shed tears in prayer. And listen, he began to say to the Lord, Lord, remember the courage. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, come on, somebody. Yeah. And you need to say to God, remember the currency that I built up with you. And Lord, I pray that you remember how I walk. Remember how I talk. Remember how I treated people. Remember how I praise you. Remember how I endured. Oh, hallelujah. Remember how when no one else was stand with me, I didn't give up. But I endured hardness as a good soldier. said, I'm not asking you to remember what they did, but remember the currency I had. Come on, are you confident in the currency that you built up with God? Where in the time of trouble, you are confident that he will hide you. So then we find in Daniel chapter 2, 
Y'all please give me a few minutes and I'll try to get this come to some point of conclusion. Amen. Amen. Daniel 2, verse 20. Daniel did not lose his perspective. He didn't give Meshach, Shadrach, and, Shadrach, and Abednego a high five. Come on, he didn't really go do that. But he turned his face to God. Come on, come on. We have a tendency that when God do something, we reach to our husband or wife first. Well, oh, y'all better hear me. Come on, we do it. But Daniel turned his face to God first. Hallelujah. And verse 20 says, Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever. For wisdom and might are his. Woo, glory to God. Listen, he didn't do this. Come on. If, come on. If he was in the flesh, he had every right to do it because nobody else knew. He says he and he changed the times and the seasons. It doesn't matter whether it's winter, fall, summer. That's right. None of those things dictate what God would do. When when they say something can't grow during this time, God changes the season. Come on, somebody. When it's in alignment with his will, God is able to supersede even the natural order. They say corn by July gotta be knee high. But God can make it knee high before July ever come. Or God can make it knee high even past July when they say it won't grow. God changes the times and the seasons and God can make things grow because God is the only one that can supersede the natural order. Come on, this is why your bills can be paid whether you only make a, you only have a $10,000 job. Come on, y'all hear me. to supersede the natural You base your making on how much money you make a year and God said you should be basing your making it on who you know. Beloved, we can.
can come boldly to the throne of God when we have established our currency. Our credibility is when you and I have not walked so good that intimidates us. It does. <laughs> Listen to what Daniel says. I'm going to try to get somewhere. I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who have given me wisdom and might and has made known unto me now what we desired of thee. You've made it known. For thou has made known unto us the king's matter. Now listen to me, beloved. I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to finish this, this point. Listen, that what Daniel said. Daniel, there, therefore, Daniel went in. Daniel had no fear. Right. Now he went into the very man that was charged to kill him. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. All right. He went into Ariel, whom the king had ordained to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He went and said thus unto him, destroy not the wise men of Babylon. Bring me in before the king. Listen, and I will show unto the king the interpretation. Now hear me. I'm going to read a quote by a brother named Howard Hunter. Listen at this quote. Boldness in the face of opposition comes rather easily to the man who is dressed in the garments of God's wisdom and mind. Let me read that again. Boldness in the face of opposition comes rather easily to the man who is dressed in the garments of God's wisdom and might. What, is that? what does it say? Going right back to the foundation that I said. When you build up currency. When you are dressed in your holy garments. When you've been walking according to the master's plan. Boldness come easily. It's not faint. Come on. You, you don't get in front of people and then all of a sudden be bold. When you are dressed in God's garments of wisdom and might, you walk boldly and it comes natural to you. There is no drawing back when others will draw back. When others run away from the sound of trouble, you run to it. Boldness comes easy. To give you an example of that, y'all know this, in 1 Samuel 17. And I'm going to try to conclude from there. Hallelujah. Come on, can you say amen? Hallelujah. When I want you to listen to this now. Harold Hunter said, boldness comes easy. When you build up curse. And you know, you know the funny thing about only you and God know what your bank account says. Come on, I look at you one day, you think, what you what you looking at me like that for? You think I know what your bank account says. Because you don't have any curse. And you're thinking, I know. I just called you one day just to say hello. And you wonder why he calling me. And you said, don't answer that, baby. Let that. Go do that machine. That's your machine. Look at Trina. Trina, you do that to me, too.
That's why, that's why we're, so, we're so scared sometimes. You thinking I'm going to peep your whole car and God hadn't revealed it. I'm not saying that God don't reveal certain things at times. But oftentimes, your guilt comes from your lack of courage. Amen. Amen. That's why you don't want to hear me. Amen. Amen. I'm a G. Everybody running, thinking I'm no son. Me and my wife have decided because we hadn't seen you, we want to come see you or call you. And y'all give us such a cold shoulder. We, me and Tanya might be looking at my wife. <laughs> now you, you got me wondering where you at. <laughs> And even if God tell me something about you, because I was once on that side, I dare not walk with judgment. Come on, didn't the apostle Paul say, such were some of you? I'm not qualified to condemn anyone. But God has called me to help exalt and lift up those who have fallen. Let me, let me try to finish this. In 1 Samuel chapter 17 we find and this, just, this is just to validate what Hunter said according to the scriptures. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Here we find that Goliath has come in 1 Samuel 17. And I, I, I want to paint the picture of all the other people around. And look at with me at verse 24. He's been cursing them for 40 days. <laughs> and all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him. And were so afraid. Please hear me. Now here's a principle here. Here you find the people of Jehovah. After all the history of miracles that God has wrought over time. They are shaking in their boots over one man. Over one man. Because they had been rebellious. And now in their own minds they have no currency with God. Hear me, in their mind, God would never neglect his people, but God will chastise. Because he loves us. So here we find David shows up. And this is what he says. Verse 26. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine? David wasn't playing on, he wasn't playing on playing robber room. David was playing on killing him. Because David had courage with God, and David knew. Now hear me now. Harold Hunter says, For a man that is dressed in wisdom and might, Boldness come easy. Y'all please hear that. David shows up with a different attitude. And he said, what's going to be done here? He says, for who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him after this matter, saying, so shall it be done to the man that killeth him. Now his brothers were jealous. Because David came with a boldness while they were walking in fear. Yes, right. Right. Eliab accused him of coming to spy out yeah. the battle. Yeah. And you know what David says? Is there not a cause? On, Is there not a cause? Am I not indignant for the right reason? Yes. In other words, what David said, y'all should have been the one making sure you shut that Philistine's mouth. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And so, y'all know the story, and I won't belabor that, but David's words were brought before the king. 
And the king, the same man living in fear, his armor didn't work for him. Mm -hmm. He's trying to give it to David. Uh -huh. Why would you want something from somebody else that has not worked for them? Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. Okay, y'all. Uh, okay, y'all try some. Y'all try somebody else. Y'all try somebody else's method. I can tell right there. And, it, on, and, and, and you expected a different result. <laughs> Saul gives him his arm and David said, I have not proved these. Uh -huh. no, sir. David said, they have not won me in the battles. Uh -huh. But David was dressed in the might of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And I'm going to move on. Listen to what happens here when he confronts Goliath. Hallelujah. Verse 41. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David and the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he, he disdained him. In other words, he mocked him. For he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. Verse 43, and the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistines cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Now please hear me. Everything about having boldness is based upon how you're dressed. Mm -hmm. Come on now. now listen to how David Amen. relayed to the Philistine how he was dressed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then David said to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with the sword and with the spear and with the shield. Hear me. David said, You are dressed in natural armor. Yeah, yeah. Oh, y'all better hear me. Come on. Y'all. with God, you come dressed in something man cannot touch. Hallelujah. You don't battle with natural armor. David said, listen, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts. What does he say? I come dressed in God. I come dressed by the God of the heavens. And listen, this same God that you defiled has given me the victory. Yes. Yes. Come on, he had a different boldness. Yes. 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 Come on, I say, when you know you got currency, you know you are clothed in the robe of righteousness. Yes. Come on, you understand that robe of righteousness means you're in right standing with God. Yes. When you're in right standing with God and you know you got all heaven backing you, it gives you a bonus. Let me finish this part. He said, the God of the armies whom you have defiled, verse 46, this day will the Lord deliver you into my hand. And listen, David said, I ain't going to panic with you. Come on, I ain't going to play with you like we play with the enemy today. He said, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee. And I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth. Hear me, beloved. That all the earth may know that there is God in Israel. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop here. That all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Not that I can have a great reputation, 
Come on, that pat on the back. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, come on. No, I'm gonna take you out. Yes. That all the world will know no, that's right. yeah. that there is yeah. a God yeah. in Israel, yeah. and I am dressed yeah. in His garments. Yeah. Come on, stand to your feet.